we're going to do today is review the naming of compounds. Why this is one of the most difficult and most often missed troublesome areas of the academic chemistry curriculum. Today we're going to first of all discover how to determine if a compound is ionic or covalent. Then we're going to explore how to name a covalent compound using what we call the prefix method. And then finally we're going to look at ionic compounds. This is where it gets a little tricky because sometimes you have to use Roman numerals and sometimes you don't. Using the Roman numerals tells us the charge of the metal. That's called the stock of the metal. So how do we tell if it's ionic or covalent? There are several different methods of determining if a compound is ionic or covalent. You can use electronegativity values. You can use locations on the periodic table. The simplest me method is to study the combination of metals and nonmetals in the form. This is what I refer to as my rule of thumb. And this is the application of the rule of thumb. When a compound consists of purely nonmetals, then it's covalent. When a compound consists of a mixture of metals and nonmetals, then it's ionic. Sometimes it can be metals and polycomic ions as well. So like a sodium, a metal atom, and an NO3. So it's a metal and two nonmetal. Maybe it's NH4 and a nonmetal. That's the only positive polycomic ion that's called ammonium. So if it's a metal plus nonmetal, we could have a metal plus a polycomic ion, or we could have NH4. Four plus a nonmetal. Those are the three kind of categories of ionic compounds. All right, so let's take a look at our compound right here. Let's take a look at CF3. Notice we have two element symbols represented by two different capital letters. Carbon is right here. Fluorine is right here. The main benchmark or landmark on the periodic table we want to refer to in identifying metals and nonmetals is this staircase right here, commonly referred to as the metalloid staircase. Anything to the left is a metal. These are all your metals over here. These are all your nonmetals over here. So both of our elements, the C and the F, the carbon and the fluorine, are both on the right side of the staircase. They're both not metals. So the consensus is this is covalent because there's two non-metals. Because there's two non-metals, it's covalent. Well, how do we name it? Well, non-metal, non-metal. There's no charges that are transferring electrons. So we have to use prefixes to determine how many atoms of each element. Three carbons right here. Eight fluorines. The prefixes range from one, mono, two, is di, three is tri, and we have tetra, and a penta. Hexa, hepta, and our final one is octa. There's also another one, nana and deca, but mono represents one, di is two, tri is three, tetra is four, penta is five, hexa is six, hepta is seven, octa is eight. Now, if you notice in our situation, we need a tri and we need an octa. Well, the first thing you do is you write down the names of our elements. So our C, that's carbon. Leave a little bit of space. Our F is fluorine. But since it's in a compound and it's the second letter in the compound, we will rename this as fluoride. The I-V-E ending. Fluoride, I-V-E. That tells you that it's part of a compound. Now, how do we deal with the tri? The three well, put the tri out front. Tri carbon, three carbons. Octa fluoride, eight fluoride. So the end name here 
ends up being tricarbon octa chloride. Okay? The second word in the covalent compounds always get the ID in it. So if the second one was Cl, it would be chloride instead of chlorine. Oxygen would be oxide instead of oxygen. Now here's some practice. So pause here. Go through and attempt to name these. Alright, now that you've attempted to name these, let's go through and take a look. We have two and four. Two nitrogens. That would be di nitrogen tetra Dinitrogen, two nitrogens, tetra hydride. So the two is represented by our di, the four is by our tetra, and also notice the IDE ending on the end of hydride. PCL3. Notice there's no subscript for our phosphorus here. No, no subscript means no prefix. So we're just going to write phosphorus trichloride. Why the tri? Because we have three fluorines. Finally, CO. Again, no prefix for no subscript. So if carbon doesn't have a subscript, it doesn't get a prefix. So it's just carbon. But the second element in any covalent compound always has to have a prefix. So what's the prefix for one, the unwritten one? Mono. This is carbon monoxide. Now, this is a key example to remember. Everybody knows that CO is carbon monoxide. Use that common idea, that common reference, to remind yourself that the first one without a subscript never gets a prefix. But the second one always gets a prefix, even if that prefix represents one, the monoxide.